Hello everyone. Again, I welcome you all to my lecture class. And in my today's lecture class, I am going to talk about APS or antiphospholipid syndrome. We very well know that antiphospholipid syndrome is a very important clinical syndrome. It is an autoantibody mediated condition, and it is one of the causes of acquired thrombophilia. We know that there are many causes of thrombophilia. Some are congenital and some are acquired. Antiphospholipid syndrome is one of the acquired causes of thrombophilia and it is characterized by recurrent thrombosis. It may be either venous thrombosis or arterial thrombosis or maybe thrombosis of the small vessels and it is also characterized by various pregnancy morbidity. Now what is CAPS or CAPS? CAPS stands for catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome. As the name suggests, catastrophic means it is a life-threatening condition and it is a very rapidly progressive thrombophilia and it simultaneously involves three or more organs. So, it is a medical emergency. In the epidemiology, there are five new cases of antiphospholipid syndrome per one lakh population per year. It has been seen that one third of the patients of systemic lupus erythematosus or other autoimmune conditions, they do have antiphospholipid antibodies, but only 5 to 10 percent of them will develop clinical antiphospholipid syndrome. If we talk about the pathogenesis, there are certain inciting events which ultimately leads to the formation of autoantibodies. Such inciting events can be various infections or oxidative stress or major physical stress. Among the physical stress, it can be severe injury, trauma or surgery. These uh, factors ultimately lead to apoptosis of the endothelial uh, cells. Okay, Then due to the endothelial cell uh, apoptosis, there will be uh, expo uh, there will be exposed phospholipids and these phospholipids will get bound to the plasma proteins and which will form a new antigen and against this new antigen autoantibodies will be formed again i repeat due to certain inciting events there will be apoptosis of the endothelial cells which will lead to the exposure of phospholipids these phospholipids will get bind to protein and uh, this phospholipid and protein component will act as a new antigen and these new anti against this new antigen autoantibodies will be formed. There are three such important autoantibodies which are lupus anticoagulant, anti-cardiolipin and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 antibody. Now if we talk about the signs and symptoms, the signs and symptoms will depend on the uh, depend on the uh, area which is thrombosed for, in, uh, for example, in case of venous thrombosis, the patient may present with uh, DVT, D-vein thrombosis. The patient may present with pulmonary embolism. The patient may present with superficial thrombofibulitis. In case of arterial thrombosis, the patient may present with uh, maybe stroke or TIA or MI or digital gangrene. In case of neurologic manifestations, the patient uh, may present with epilepsy, the patient may present with migraine, the patient may present with chorea, the patient may present with ataxia, cerebellar ataxia, the patient may also have renal manifestation. It may be due to the thrombosis of renal vein or renal artery or maybe glomerular thrombus. In the musculoskeletal manifestations, the patient may have arthritis or arthralgia. In the obstetric manifestations, the patient may have eclampsia or preeclampsia. In the fetal manifestations, the patient may have um, early or late fetal loss or premature delivery. The hematologic manifestations, the patient may have thrombocytopenia or hemolytic anemia. Now, how do you diagnose a case of antiphospholipid? syndrome the diagnosis is mainly clinical uh, one clinical and one lab criteria the combination of one clinical and one uh, laboratory criteria and in absence of other causes of thrombophilia will uh, give us a diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome now if we talk about the clinical criteria let's see what are the clinical criteria First clinical criteria is vascular thrombosis. It may be um, one or more episodes of either arterial or venous thrombosis or small vessel thrombosis. 
or it may be pregnancy morbidity. Among the pregnancy morbidity, it may be one or more unexplained fetal death beyond at or beyond 10 weeks, death of a morphologically normal fetus. Okay, the second, it may be one or more premature death of a morphologically normal fetus before 34 weeks of gestation. And it may be three or more unexplained consecutive spontaneous abortion before 10th week of gestation. Now, if we look at the lab criteria, the presence of uh, lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibody and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibody should be present at an intermediate or high titer in two occasions and 12 weeks apart. So, we have discussed the clinical and lab criteria out of which one clinical and one lab criteria should be present and there should be absence of other causes of thrombophilia to diagnose the case as antiphospholipid syndrome. Now, how do we manage a case of antiphospholipid syndrome? Once we have diagnosed a patient with antiphospholipid syndrome, they should be on lifelong anticoagulation. Okay, It can be with only warfarin or it can be uh, with warfarin and aspirin combination. In case of pregnancy morbidities, pregnancy morbidities can be prevented with use of low molecular weight heparin along with aspirin 80 mg daily. Or else, if we want to prevent pregnancy morbidities, IV immunoglobulin 400 mg per kg for 5 days can also be used. So these are the management options what we have for antiphospholipid syndrome. So this is all about antiphospholipid syndrome in short. Thank you for patience hearing.